It's 6 p.m. on a Monday, Seolal or Lunar New Year's Day here in Korea. Welcome to our newscast. I'm Daniel Che here to provide you with the latest. First, we begin with international reactions to North Korea's latest provocation. The international community was quick to respond to North Korea's rocket launch Sunday with the UN Security Council agreeing that tougher measures needed to be taken. Seoul's foreign minister will be at UN headquarters this week to ask for more cooperation in responding to the North's provocations. Kwon so starts us off. Seoul's Foreign Minister Yoon byung se will be in New York Tuesday through Wednesday to call for powerful measures in response to North Korea's recent threats. During the trip, Minister Yoon will also meet with UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon to ask for cooperation regarding quick adoption of a UN Security Council resolution. At an emergency meeting Sunday, the UN Security Council's 15 members unanimously agreed that North Korea's rocket launch was a clear violation of UN resolutions. The members of the Security Council strongly condemn this launch. Pyongyang claims it launched what it called a peaceful Earth observation satellite. But nobody is fooled. The international community is mostly in agreement over Pyongyang's use of ballistic missile technology, which is prohibited by existing Security Council resolutions. South Korean ambassador to the UN, Oh Jun, called the North's act, quote, totally outrageous and unacceptable. The efforts to achieve denuclearization through dialogue so far have only resulted in allowing North Korea to buy time to advance its nuclear capabilities. Even China and Russia, two of the five veto-wielding members of the council that traditionally are more sympathetic to the regime, expressed frustration with Pyongyang's latest transgression. The question is, will the consensus reached at Sunday's emergency meeting be enough to swiftly draft a round of new sanctions? As the call comes just a month after Pyongyang's fourth nuclear test, which is also waiting for a new resolution. That's been a very difficult task so far due to the inability of the U.S. and China to narrow the gap on differences regarding the severity of sanctions to levy on Pyongyang. Kwon so Arirang News. Speaking of China, Beijing has summoned South Korean Ambassador Kim jang soo after Seoul and Washington agreed to start talks on deploying the THAAD missile defense system on South Korean soil. Chinese Vice Foreign Minister Liu Zhenmin made the call on Sunday to protest the talks. It's the first time the Chinese government has summoned the South Korean ambassador. THAAD, or the Terminal High Altitude Area Defense System made by the U.S., targets short, medium and intermediate ballistic missiles in flight. The decision to deploy the system came after North Korea claimed to have successfully launched a satellite into space. A North Korean patrol boat trespassed a western maritime border separating the two Koreas just a day after Pyongyang launched a long-range rocket. The South Korean Navy fired off several warning shots before the boat returned to the north. For details, let's turn to our Kim Hyun Bin. South Korea's defense ministry said on Monday that a North Korean patrol boat ignored several warning messages from the Navy before violating the northern limit line. Soon after, five warning shots were fired and the patrol boat retreated across the border. The vessel spent around 20 minutes on South Korean territory. At 6.55 a.m., one North Korean patrol boat crossed the NLL and ignored our warning broadcast. We shot off warning shots and then it retreated. The ministry added that the nation's military remains on high alert after Pyongyang's long-range missile launch, or what the North calls an Earth observation satellite. South Korea's chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Lee Sun Jin, on Sunday, said there is a high possibility Pyongyang could conduct an unexpected tactical provocation and order the military to maintain combat readiness. The North's patrol boats have often trespassed into South Korean waters on the NLL, as the communist regime refuses to recognize the NLL and demand the line be moved further south. The NLL was drawn unilaterally by the UN command when the three-year Korean War entered a ceasefire in 1953. The two Koreas have engaged in past conflicts near the maritime border in 1999, 2002, and 2009. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. 
more North Korean leaflets advertising its recent nuclear test have been found over the weekend in the south. Cheongju Cheongwon police reported on Monday that some 30 flyers have been retrieved near Cheongju International Airport and were passed over to the military. There were also reports of flyers found in residential areas on Sunday morning. Last Tuesday, police retrieved some 30,000 leaflets on the rooftop of a building in Suwon. The contents criticized President Park Geun-hye and glorify the regime's latest nuclear test. The communist state released the leaflets by balloon in an apparent response to Seoul's recent resumption of anti-Pyongyang broadcasts along the border. And now let's check out the traffic situation on this Sala or Lunar New Year's Day. According to the Korea Expressway Corporation, as of 5 p.m., those headed to Daejeon from Seoul will be on the road for three and a half hours, three hours and 50 minutes if you're headed back to the capital. To Daegu, currently four and a half hours, five and a half hours for a trip to Seoul. Brace yourself for a six and a half hour road trip to and from Busan. And get comfortable in your seats if you're headed to Gwangju. You'll be stuck for 4 hours and 50 minutes, 6 hours to drive back to Seoul. The KEC says some 420,000 cars will have left Seoul and adjacent areas by midnight. By then, Seoul-bound traffic should ease up, but the congestion will continue through tomorrow night in the reverse direction. Salal is one of the most celebrated holidays in Korea, and that is why I'm dressed in the traditional hanbok. Park ji tells us more about the tradition that's deeply rooted in Korea's ancient history and the minds of the Korean people. Out of many national holidays in Korea, Seolnal is the biggest and the most important holiday. Since ancient Korea, dating back to nearly 2,000 years ago, historic records show that Koreans have kept the tradition of spending the first day of the lunar calendar in a special way. Looking closely at the Korean word Seolnal will give you a glimpse of how Koreans have traditionally perceived this day. Nal out of Seolnal means basically day in English. And the prefix Seol has originated from Korean words like Seolda meaning unfamiliar, Sarida meaning cautious, and Seolda meaning sorrowful. So it can be inferred that Koreans have kept this unfamiliar first new day very solemnly with an exercise of caution and moderation. This mindset of cherishing the moment of first day of the new year is deeply reflected in traditional routines. Koreans start the day by holding a memorial service for ancestors, praying for the prosperity of the family, and expressing gratitude towards them by sincerely preparing food and they make a deep bow to their elders, or sebe, paying respects to them and also seeking their blessings for the new beginning. Then people spend the rest of the day with family, eating traditional food, playing food games, and sharing stories. It's been more than 120 years since the solar calendar was introduced in Korea, but Koreans still keep the tradition of celebrating Lunar New Year's Day. Any previous attempts by the government to keep only the solar New Year's holiday all failed as the deep awe Koreans have held for thousands of years towards the first moment of the year in a lunar calendar is stamped on their minds. Also, it's always good to have two new beginnings of a year and a second chance to stick to your New Year's resolutions. Park ji Arirang News. It's Lunar New Year tradition for families to set up a table of food as part of ancestors' rites here in Korea. There are about two dozen different types of dishes that are prepared, and what's special is that they all have specific positions. Our Kim Min-ji explains. Setting up a table of food is part of a long tradition in Korea to show respect to one's ancestors and fulfill filial duties. But there are some rules to remember. All food served on the ritual table should be in odd numbers, as it's considered good manners and lucky, and the dishes are placed in five rows, the finest closest to the ancestral tablet. The first row is where the rice and soup go. The second is where the main dishes sit, fish to the east side and meat to the west side. On the next row, fish and meat stews. Dried fish, vegetables and Korean-style glass noodles are placed on the fourth row. And finally, on the fifth row are the desserts, with bright-colored fruits on the east and lighter ones on the west. But how much does it cost to prepare? 
This year, it will cost an average of roughly 200 U.S. dollars to prepare for the ancestral table for a four-person household. That's up about 3 percent from last year. This is based on a price check of over 20 food products from 90 distribution outlets. The traditional market was the cheapest, but if you buy groceries at the department store, you can expect to pay nearly twice as much. I think I will spend around $250 this year. I come to the traditional market because it's cheaper and all the produce is very fresh. But some people were shocked at the prices. Vegetables are so expensive this year compared to last year. There's hardly anything you can buy, even with $100 or $200. While it may be a burden to prepare and the prices can get a little hefty, at the end of the day, it's about the effort that goes into preparing the table and the happiness shared while eating with your loved ones. Kim Min-ji, Arirang News. You can't put a price tag on certain things. Moving on, Incheon International Airport is one of the busiest places in Korea during the Lunar New Year holiday. This year it's ready for the heavy holiday traffic with an expanded workforce and equipment upgrades to keep people and luggage moving in the right direction. Kim ji fills us in. More than 1 million people are expected to use Incheon International Airport to fly in or out of Korea during the five-day-long Lunar New Year holiday. This means the airport will accommodate around 170,000 people per day. And that number is expected to shoot up to 183,000 on Wednesday, the last day of the holiday. That will be the largest number of people flying in or out of the airport in a single day. Most passengers say they're using the holiday to spend some quality time with family. I look forward to seeing my family. I haven't seen them in six months due to my student exchange program in Britain. I'm flying to Shanghai, China to spend my Lunar New Year's holiday this year with my two sisters. To handle the large number of passengers, the Incheon International Airport Corporation says it'll double its workforce to cope with the extra traffic and ensure that passengers can collect their luggage on time. During the busiest day on Wednesday, the airport is expected to handle roughly 176,000 bags. The airport corporation also says it has replaced CCTV cameras to boost monitoring and prevent theft. It's also upgraded the motor control device that supports the airport's luggage conveyor belts to make sure everything moves along smoothly. Kim Jeon, Arirang News. The Denver Broncos won Super Bowl 50 on Sunday, marking the second victory for the team's quarterback, Peyton Manning. But we're not just talking about sports. It's more than just a game. It's a battlefield for global corporations trying to capture the attention of hundreds of millions of viewers. And according to our Hwang ji Korean companies also put up their socks and got into the mix. Hollywood superstar Ryan Reynolds' latest roles include a police officer a construction worker and a pedestrian. As he plays co-star to some of Hyundai's latest safety features in one of its newest vehicles. Including this commercial, Korea's biggest automaker Hyundai Motors had four advertisements aired during Super Bowl 50. And Hyundai is not alone. Its corporate cousin Kia Motors features the Academy Award-winning actor Christopher Walken. Kia has advertised during the Super Bowl for seven straight years. Despite the multi-million dollar cost, global companies fight for the chance to air a commercial spot during the game, which attracts more than 100 million viewers in the United States alone. Counting viewers outside of America, that figure doubles. Companies pay roughly $170,000 per second, which makes the total cost of a 30-second advertisement $5 million. LG Electronics made its Super Bowl debut starred Liam Neeson to promote the company's flagship OLED TV. In the actual game on Sunday, the Denver Broncos defeated the Carolina Panthers 24-10. The winning marks a third Super Bowl title for the Broncos and the second for it's quarterback a, a Peyton feeling. Manning. Hong Jie, Arirang of, News. Uh, of accomplishment for this team. On a more somber note, rescue efforts are ongoing in Tainan City, Taiwan, after a 17-story apartment collapsed at 4 a.m. Saturday local time following a 6.4-magnitude earthquake. Officials said late on Sunday that so far, 
310 people have been rescued from the rubble of the Wei Guan Jinlong complex. 100 of the nearly 500 people injured have been taken to hospitals. It's believed some 34 people have died, with 121 unaccounted for. Two people, a male and a female, reportedly trapped at different sides of the building, were being were seen talking to rescue workers. Hundreds of soldiers armed with high-tech equipment have been dispatched to the scene. They're teamed up with rescue dogs, and there were also cranes at the site. Shelters are being set up for those who have lost their homes. Taiwan is located near the junction of two tectonic plates and often experiences tremors. The latest catastrophe has reignited calls for improving the country's public safety management system. The Zika virus is spreading rapidly across the Americas. The latest reports from Colombia reveal that more than 3,100 pregnant women are now infected. According to Colombian President Juan Manuel Santos, no cases of microcephaly linked to Zika have been recorded in Colombia. The government is now uncertain about a previous projection of a possible 500 cases of Zika-linked microcephaly based on data from other countries battling the mosquito-borne virus. Brazil is investigating the potential link between Zika infections and more than 4,000 suspected cases of the birth defect. Meanwhile, over in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, festivities at the annual carnival went on as planned, despite the health scare. But things may play out differently for the upcoming Olympic Games, as widespread fears surrounding Zika could dissuade participants and spectators from attending. And that's all from us. We'll have more updates coming your way at 10 p.m. Korea time.